If you are tired of seeing the same old things in California, you need to see our journey. Red light. Hi, I'm Christina. And I'm Randy. Are you ready for an adventure? Come join us today on this windy day at this U.S. Borax Visitor Center in Boron, California. I'm blowing so hard I can't hold the camera. <laughs> If you haven't already done so, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. In a previous video, we went to the Old Harmony Borax Works in Death Valley. To give you an idea, I'll show you on the map that this is Las Vegas and Los Angeles, and we're headed for right in the middle. If you were going from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, this would be an easy stop. We took Highway 14 to the Highway 58 and got off in Boron. Oh, we're headed in to Borax in Boron, California. Join us. I'm just surprised how huge this place is. That's a lot of soap. <laughs> That's a lot of soap. The world would be a cleaner place. There we have our Borax Visitor Center open daily, 9 to 5. Excluding major holidays, but closed on Sunday and Monday. We are here on a Saturday. Let's just see how busy this place is. So far, I haven't seen another car on the road. We might be the only visitors. Celebrating 90 years in Boron, the 20 Mule Team Borax, 145 years of operation. From 1872. Oh, yes, visitor center straight. And we're headed to the visitor center. Wonder if they're open. I mean, I don't see another car in sight. They didn't pave the road for the visitor center. <laughs> <laughs> well, the road needs some TLC. That's all. Maybe a little borax. <laughs> oh, it's up there on the hill? No way! Are you kidding me? Okay. Guess you don't want to come here in the rain. <laughs> yeah, it's visitor center. Now we're on a dirt road. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of when we went to Bodie. <laughs> no, Remember? It's a nicer road. Well, it's definitely a nicer road. Yes. Okay. Coming around the mountain when she come. Oh, that's cool. Oh, look at the, look at the Borax team. I'll have to, I'll bring you over there as soon as we park. We got three cars in the parking lot. We're number four and the car behind us is number five. Good laundry excuses. Your Borax powder. <laughs> Look at the 20 teams. Check that out. This is so cool. Check it out. Sample of Borat Ore. It's like um, selenite. Look, it's, look at it. it. It's just it's just like selenite. Welcome to the Borax Visitor Center. It's almost like crystal. It's almost like crystal. It's so smooth. Yeah, but originally built in Mojave, the wagons hauled Borax out of Death Valley, which you've seen in a previous video. Oh, that's the mule team. The mule team bell. The lead mules wore these bells to warn the other team members. 1,200 The original bells. Oh, that's the mule team. An important part of this visit 
is to see one of the largest and richest deposits of borax on the planet. Rio Tinto is a company supplying nearly half of the world. Well, they don't have a meal team anymore. There's the meal team. <laughs> you said that tooth there is uh, three foot nine inches long, so you can imagine the the scale of what you're looking at. And of course, they, they, they're twisting all the time. Okay. Actually, a piece the size of, excuse me, that uh, kernite out the front. Right. Piece, you know? could fit easily in here and be broken up. But it's a shame to think that those museum grade pieces are going into the crush roll. Yeah. Where, where is this? Uh, well, is it, we're gonna be, uh, we'll be able to see all this stacking and the uh, crusher from the back window. I okay. Can show you. It's a little a bit easier to lay it out that way. Okay. You guys, just a couple more things. This gentleman right here to this uh, shovel. That's 85 tons for each scoop. When they go into the trucks, the trucks hold three scoops. So that's 240 tons. Now that's 240 tons of material plus the weight of the truck. So 240 tons. Now we are in a kind of in the middle of purchasing new trucks. These are 240 tons. So we're going to 440 ton trucks. Wow. And it, just turns out that they're a little bit big for some of our process and some of our uh, crushers. So we've got kind of a delay there until we can resolve how to get a big truck into something that uses a smaller truck. But anyway, it's probably gonna happen soon. And of course our lithium uh, in, in our product, and I'll talk about that when we after we see the video. Okay. okay. Yeah, you guys look around. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. Be sure, be sure and, and look at this display over here because this is the one that shows all the different products that the borates go to be, be to, to use. Now, just as an example, we've got a customer up in Sacramento of Procter & Gamble, and they will take our borates and they'll make the soaps, they'll make the, the, the hand soaps and all that kind of stuff, toothpaste. We don't make any of that kind of stuff. So all we do is process borates here. Right. Okay. Oh. Yeah. But anyway, that'll give okay. you an idea of all the different Very products. Good. Yeah. Insulation. Yeah, that's a. See the ceramic tiles, the wood compost. There's our wood. There's our floor. Right? Computer cell phone because of the lithium. Wow. Oh, from a golf club. Wow. Oh, look at that. Bondo, Miracle Grow. Insulation. They all have borax in it. This is how it sells its 50 pound bags that are easy to load or one ton super bags like this one, all packaged, packing and wrapping is automated to make it more efficient. And then they have the granular ones. Look at that. It's a whole pallet. Yeah, it's a whole pallet. A whole pallet full of borax. Dehydrated borax. Because we went to Death Valley and saw the 20 mule team, the original 20 mule team wagons, we decided to come to Borax this is part of their in, in Boron, California to see how they actually make this stuff and what it's used for. Because after we see a movie, the curtains will open, and then you get to see the whole thing. ...in California, and it's here that we mine and process for nearly the last 100 years to make essential materials for modern life. In addition to the haul trucks that are the size of a two-story house, and the shovels that are seven stories high, today you'll meet all of our people that are most critical to make our products happen. We have electricians, welders, various operators and maintainers, engineers, and a whole bunch of scientists that help us produce our materials every day. Please join me for a tour of Borates and Lithium 
And hopefully at the end of the day, you understand our business a little bit better. Imagine a two-story house driving past you on the road. Funny thing is, due to their sheer size and weight, you'll never actually see one on a public roadway. These modern-day mules travel on mine site roadways, transporting ore from the bottom of the pit to the processing plants up top. Our trucks run 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So in the 1800s, it used to take the 20 mule team one week just to haul 20 tons of ore from Death Valley to Mojave in order to just make one product. Today, it takes us less than an hour to haul 270 tons of material in order to make 16 products. So we've definitely come a long way. We do work 24-7, 365 days a year. So everybody has a good time, works hard, and is safe. That's cool. We use explosives to blast material from the ground. We have two shovels and three loaders that help us mine that material. Then we have a haul truck fleet, uh, 13 of them, that will be used to take that material from the pit out to the surface where the ore gets crushed and the waste goes to the dumps. We are typically able to mine about 3 million tons of ore a year and 30 million tons of waste. From gold in their waste material. And with decades of mining, we went looking for gold. We didn't find any. What we did find was lithium, and since then, our teams have been working tirelessly to produce a lithium product we can sell. We found that we had lithium in our waste stream, so we scrambled and we put together a team to determine how we would process that. And in that time, we built a lithium demo plant behind me, which is a 10 ton per year plant to be able to extract lithium from our waste stream and convert it into battery grade lithium carbonate. Being able to produce battery grade lithium would enable us to enter the growing renewable and sustainable energy market whilst extending our mine life and recycling the waste streams that we've already mined. Nothing of this sort was done before. There was no blueprint. Again, uh, we are trying to extract lithium from our waste pot. Uh, so there is really no recipe you can find online or, or you know through, uh, through some other engineering company. So we have to really engineer this. The big challenge for us was to put it all together and make it work for us, right? Make it work to produce lithium. So when the movie ends, the curtain opens and reveals the mine below with the processing plant next to it. The open pit mine is over a thousand feet deep on the right hand side of your screen and closer to the processing area, it's 800 feet deep. They say the ore reserve in this one mine will produce sufficient production through at least 2050. They started also producing lithium in 2019, which was found in the borax waste product. We know that lithium is used in batteries like the types in our cell phones, but did you know that it's also used to produce heat-resistant glass and ceramics, like the type of glass that we use in our microwaves. Lithium is also used as a fusion device in thermonuclear weapons. From a distance from the visitor center, the giant machines move around like little ants. When you see a big truck moving around like a little ant, you realize just how big this mine is. And then we have the actual 20 mule team. How cool is that? And the first horses, if you look, are the first mules. Sorry about that. We'll have the bells. And the bells will signify when they're stopping or they're going. Hear the bells? I'm not doing it. The wind is. See, look at it. There's 20 of these mules that pull this. These are outside. Outside of the visitor center, which is very cool that they have this. So you can actually see it in working order or what it was supposed to be like. Then you have the ore cart. You remember, I couldn't get really close to those last wheels. 
but the wheel comes up to right here on me here see right here see so when I go to the next one here's your water barrel and this one is actually taller than me it's amazing then you have the second ore cart and the final one this was your water guys in the front get the bells. <laughs> the first generation mule team wagon is in Death Valley and the second generation mule team wagon is here in Boron. Entering the visitor center is like going into two giant pipes. This will be the new overlook. Of course we can't go down there because of the wind and it says danger. And we're gonna pan over and we're going next to one of the rigs that is down there because you don't get a, an idea of how huge this thing is until you're standing next to it. They said it's like a seven story. Was it a seven story building? Two story house. Let's check that out. Just crazy. There's the ladder to get up. And the guy sits in the cab right there. The wind is blowing so hard at this point I have to do a voiceover. But I made sure to put myself in the picture so that you could see a perspective of the truck. These are mining trucks. They're Caterpillar 797s. They got 3,550 horsepower. It's got a seven speed planetary transmission. The wheels are held on by 54 36 millimeter nuts. The cost of one of these type of tires in 2009 was $42,500 per tire. Overall cost of this truck is $5 million. 190 ton haul truck tire. This is a tire from my Caterpillar 789 haul truck. It is 11.8, 11 feet 8 inches high. And look at Randy's in a donut. <laughs> Bridgestone tires. <laughs> is that what it is? It is Bridgestone. That's a big place. That's a, that's a tire from that truck. If you enjoyed our vlog, please subscribe and ring that notification bell and give us a like and a comment. It lets us know you care. And we'll see you on our next adventure.